Hey guys, today's video is going to be talking about surface and heads and other surfaces that need a, a precision surface on an engine or anything. And this is a head off my 14 and a half overhead valve and we got a 11 horse flathead back here we're going to experiment with first. And uh, I got the block here off the, the new block I ordered for the 14.5 that needs surfaced. I figured this engine blew the head gas because you can see a mark right here where they usually blow. That's probably the only thing wrong with it. I got a really good buy on this. And uh, so, yeah, we'll go ahead and get set up here. And there's several different ways you can do it. And we're going to look at the method I picked out for right now. Okay, so I went with the budget route. And this don't look like nothing special because it ain't nothing special. This is a half inch thick, 12 inch by 12 inch piece of steel. And You'd want at least half inch if you're going to do this, and you want a good quality grade of steel. As you can see, this one ain't the best quality, but uh, it'll work for what I'm doing. And the best method is a granite surfacing plate. It's just about a two or three inch piece of granite, how thick it is. But it costs about five times as much as this. And I got this for like uh, 30 bucks. And actually, the, the third and fourth method will be to use a milling machine. Where it would just surface this down, but uh, in the last method, if you could on a smaller engine put it in a lathe, the way it'd be turning like this, and you build a machine this down just a little bit, and you're not taking much off. On this one, this is an 11 horse head. I'll be using this one at 12 horse to raise compression. So I'm going to take this down to make it flush with this to get just a little bit more out of it probably saying well that might cause a clearance problem or something which it might but if it does we'll figure something out it's experiment anyway and I figured this would be a good one to test this block on. And for the longest time when I tore an engine down I just used a drill to clean this wire brush cup on there to clean this off and that's about the worst thing you can do and, and I know that but I didn't have no choice because I never did invest the time and money into getting an actual surfacing plate. I figured for small engines this would be perfect and because uh, if you do that you're getting it could be one little tiny score that you can't even see and your gases can start going through there and it can start eroding it away and making it a leak and possibly blowing a head gasket in a certain spot or something this all this does is make a very true machine surface after doing some research I picked out the 220 grit paper that's about a middle ground some people like to use a hundred to get it started and work their way down I'm just going to use this from start to finish and we'll see what it does. Now this ain't wet or dry paper. I should have bought that because you're supposed to use uh, some type of oil to help uh, keep the paper clean like WD-40 or something. So we're going to try it dry and if it clogs up we might try a little WD-40. But And you don't want to just run it back and forth. Some people say to do that. But most people say to do like a figure eight. Where this box is so small I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that or not. So we'll We'll try it and see. But see, it sits pretty true now, so that's a good sign. We're going to do a little test here and get an idea of how true this head is. I'm just going to run it like that and we'll look at it. I'm not really seeing nothing yet. Here's a good example of high and low places. You can see you want the whole thing to be like this. You get an idea, this head probably wasn't sealing at all. <laughs> Which it might have been warped anyway. I'm just going to go around in a circle. It should be alright. Try to change it a little bit. See, it's already starting to come in back here on this side, and a little bit here and there. So it gives you an idea of how untrue the surface actually is on one. 
so let me uh, get back with you. We'll put you on time lapse and we'll see what it looks like when I get it done. Alright guys, about a half hour later, I got it looking pretty good. One little spot right here, and I'm not worried about it that. But it's perfectly smooth. And you can see I got a pretty good finish on it too. I mean, yeah, there's scratches there, but you're going to have that. The only way you get that out is if you take it down to like 600 grit, and you're going to be here for a couple of days doing that. But this will seal perfect here, just like that. As long as you get a I guess you call it a brushed aluminum look. That's about what it looks like. But uh, that'll seal like a brand new head right there. As long as your block is just like that too. You gotta do it on the block, which uh, the block will be the fun part. <laughs> I was gonna take this one down. But it's just gonna take too much sand and so I can, and I'll do that later on if I, if I feel it's necessary, which I may not. But I just wanted to test it on something that's not real important at the moment. I mean, don't want to lose the head, but you know, I mean, I'm not working on this particular motor right, right now, but All right, so I got a pretty good finish here. There's one little spot right here. But you can't even feel it with my fingernails, so I'm not worried about it. But everything else looks pretty good. A pretty good finish on it. So I think it'll be all right time I get the head gasket and everything and surface the block, too. Okay, so the block cleaned up better than I thought it would, and a lot faster, too. As smooth as can be. And the spot I was talking about here, it's gone, so hopefully that'll take care of that problem. It's actually turned out better than the head did, so we should get almost perfect seal on that. As you've seen on the video, I was going back and forth with it. I was turning it sideways and going that way, never doing it in the same direction for more than like 10 seconds or so, just to keep getting any spots wearing more and I was trying to swirl it more in circles because I don't have enough room to do figure eights with something that big especially that block that block was hard to do but yeah you just want to keep alternating directions that way you're never going in the same direction and you'll want to clean this real good you can see there's metal particles all over this and uh, and you also want to this would be a good time to go ahead and hone the cylinder which is what I'm going to do and you'll want to scrub it with a brush to get any abrasive material out of the cylinder because if you don't it's just going to eat itself up and destroy itself so but uh, I'm probably going to pressure wash it after I get it done that way any particles will be blasted out and also uh, notice I had to take the alignment pins out of here and here you just get a hold of them with a pair of pliers and they'll pull right out same goes for these if you need to take these out for some reason. But uh, this block is in uh, really good shape. And you can also uh, use this method for like a flange on a carburetor if you think it's necessary. But you just have to make sure you're holding it real flat because it's easy to go crooked with it. You just have to watch out for that. And there's a lot of different methods of doing this. And this is uh, the cheapest and the easiest way to do it yourself. The only thing I had to buy was a steel block and some sandpaper and like I said you want at least half inch thick and you want it bigger if you can find bigger sheets of sandpaper but uh, but yeah it turned out perfect so we all get a perfect seal on that so well guys if you got any questions or comments about uh, surfacing 
And like I said, this is also the same method for a granite surfacing plate. I'm just using steel because it's a fraction of the cost and getting pretty good results. So if you got any questions about the surfacing plates and surfacing the parts like this, uh, leave me a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching, guys.